Hey guys, the Gadget Man here with nothing but gadgets, and today I'm going to be showing you this Woo Sports G600 trail camera. So, three, two, one, let's get at it. Okay guys, this camera was sent to me by the Woo Sports Company for free to do this review, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. You know me, I'm going to show you this device, I'm going to put it through a rigorous testing period and show you the results so you can make an informed buying decision. But the first thing we need to do is break the baby out of the box and see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay guys, here's what comes in the box. You've got your hardware mounting base your strap and a manual and the camera itself. That's all that comes in the box. Okay, let's take a look at this camera and see what we can tell about it. So it's only got one side clip, little plastic clip right over here. All right, that holds this door over here. Okay, so unlike most of the cameras which are clamshells, which the whole front flips out, this just has a cover to cover the LCD screen. This is actually one of my preferred designs right here because um, it keeps the camera pointing forward, so when you position the camera, you can see exactly where the camera is pointing by looking at the screen. Whereas on the clamshell design, when it opens up the camera, it's pointing the opposite direction. Okay, So this really helps in positioning the camera. Um, it has a removable battery tray, which you press that button there, and out comes that. You load your batteries in, and you put that in there, like that. A little bit rough, but works. And that is another one of my preferred designs, is that style of battery system. We have a side-mounted um, full-size SD card, which is a, a also a preference of mine. And instead of the micro SD uh, connection port, it has a mini SD connection port. Okay, It does not provide the data cable in the box, but your standard phone charger cable with most smartphones is going to be able to fit that right there. Um, let's see here. It has an external power port right there so that you can power it with a solar panel. There is your tripod mounting screw that is going to be used with this right here with the hardware mounting base. Okay. It has a place for the strap and a place if you want to use a rope. Okay, and there we go. Let's see what else we got here. It's got side sensors and it looks like what's to be no glow LEDs so that it should not be able to be visible at night. Well guys, that's all I can tell by looking at the actual design of it right now. Let's go ahead and put this baby out in the field for a couple of weeks and let it catch some videos and images and I'll come back and I'll show you those and then we'll talk about how it performs. So hold on, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I'm back, and uh, I've had this baby in the field for 15 days capturing images and videos, and so I'm going to show those to you right now. After the image and video samples, I will have the detailed technical results of this test, battery voltage, images, size, all that stuff. So if that's what you're here for, go ahead and hold on for that or jump forward in the video. Right now, we're going to jump right into the video and images. So first up, we're going to do the videos because I think that's the most important. And I'm just going to give you a montage of daytime, nighttime, uh, you know, morning, evening, you know, basically all the different lighting situations, light, you know, from bright light to dark um, to let you see how this camera performed. I got some really good shots in here, bobcats, two little deers kind of testing each other out a little bit and a few other funny things that I'm going to throw in there. So uh, let's go ahead and shoot those.
All right, there you go. Uh, hopefully you were able to see some good footage there that will tell you whether this camera is good for you. Um, but some people just want to take images and not videos and they want to see how the images are. So let me go ahead and throw a montage of images up here for you. So here you go. Alright guys, so there you saw those. Alright, let me talk about talk to you about my impressions of these. Now this is a pretty budget camera running around 45, 50 bucks. I think it's like $49 with a 5% off coupon right now. Um, and I'm actually going to say that considering the price point of the camera, uh, I think that the video and images qualities are quite good for it. Um, especially the color balance. Uh, a lot of these cheaper cameras like this, what they tend to do is get um, rejected sensors that come, you know, out of China and stuff like that. And they, you know, they make sensors and some of them don't turn out just right. And they tend to throw those lower cost or rejected sensors that didn't pass quality control into these more budget cameras. And a lot of times they don't get color balance and right where the, the color is either a little bit red or a little bit too blue or something like that. And I felt the color balance on this was very accurate, um, basically true to life. And that, that impresses me because I don't see that very often, okay? Clarity on the images was really good. Clarity on the video, especially daytime, is really good. There was a little bit of blurriness in the night. Some of the nighttime videos, like the camera didn't focus just right. I mean, it wasn't on my end really bad you could really just barely tell it but you know i'm just nitpicking here it, i could see just a little bit of out of focus in some videos not all of them i think it was just a focusing issue i've had uh we went through a snowstorm and i showed you some videos of that and i think you know maybe got some little flakes of something on here that maybe might have caused that little bit of a out of focus thing there but outside of that there's really nothing to uh you know, complain about as far as image and video size. This is not a 4K camera, um, so I'm not comparing it to a 4K camera, but it, uh, for the price point, the camera did really well in this test. Um, now let's go ahead and let's jump right into the technical uh, results. So um, let me flip over here to my technical results page. Let's start with the test perimeters. Okay, so we had 15 days in the field, all the quality settings were set to max. I had the capture settings set to take one picture and one 10 second video every time the, the camera was activated. And the initial batteries that went in are the Amazon Basics right here, which are a little higher voltage than the Rayovax uh, that I normally use. They go in at 1.65 volts. Now the Rayovax alkaline normally are 1.62 volts. So I'm switching over to these batteries because I'm getting a little bit more voltage out of them. Okay, so the initial voltage 1.65 volts. All right, test results. After 15 days in the field, we ended up with 420 images, or 420 files total. That's 210 images and 210 videos. So it did exactly what it was programmed to do, take one image and one video for every time it was activated. All right, the total, total data size written on the card was six gigabytes, okay? Um, the total image size was 3.8 megabytes per image and video size was 2.5 megabytes per second of video. The ending voltage on the batteries was 1.47 volts, okay? All right, now let's talk about those results there. Uh, as far as detection ratio, it was impeccable. It never, I never saw, there was not one picture or one video in which there was not some type of animal. It did get a lot of pictures of birds, so I might move the actual sensitivity down to, you know, medium because I had it set to high. There were some doves and quail that came, but those are interesting videos. And if you're monitoring birds, it does pick up birds quite well. Um, didn't, it didn't miss any birds, you know, so that was good. Um, the, uh, the image size is a little bit big. It is a 30 megapixel camera and the images are quite crisp. And, uh, and you know, that might be the reason it's 3.8 megabytes 
for for the image is you know so that is actually not bad you know uh, a 15 or 16 megapixel camera would take oh around a two 1.5 to 2 megabyte picture um, I did a review recently for another 20 megapixel camera and its image size was 2.1 uh, megabytes per image uh, so 3.8 megabytes is a little on the high side, but considering the the sharpness of the pictures and the clarity I think that's not too much to ask I'd rather have spend a little more data and get a better picture than have a crappy picture at lower data I have seen though, you know having said that I have seen cameras that have produced as clear pictures using less data So, you know, I'm just saying it's not that bad um Video wise, 2.5 megabytes for uh, per second for a good quality HD. Now this is not a 4K camera. Uh, that was a full HD. That's not a bad video size. I've seen less, um, but um, the video quality was pretty decent. So I think that it's reasonable. Um, as far as the ending voltage is pretty much what I would expect in this camera for that amount of days in the field. And you know, um, the amount of images that were taken. Now, one thing I want to state about battery usage. I take 10 second videos and the camera takes most of its videos at night. And so whenever the camera is on and it's, and it's you know, and taking video, it has to keep the LEDs active the whole time. And that's a really big drain. If I were not taking videos and just taking images, the batteries would probably have not used very much power at all. Um, but because of the 10 second videos at night and there's 210 of them mostly at night, I would say nine out of 10 videos were at night. Um, that's a huge drain on the batteries. And so I think that the battery usage or efficiency of the battery is about on average with what I've seen out of other cameras. Okay. Um, I've seen some a little better and some a, a lot worse, but this was pretty good for what it is. Um, that is pretty much all I've got to say about the camera as far as this test result. You saw the videos, you saw the images, you can make a, de a decision on that. What I will say in closing here that I do like the design of the camera. Um, it uses the wide angle lens instead of the zoomed cropped image lens where it's real close and real narrow. I do like the wide angle shot for me personally, wildlife viewing, I prefer that. Um, the cameras that um, have that cropped or zoomed in lens tend to miss animals a lot more or just catch parts of them So I prefer that myself um, There is one interesting thing I did want to note about this is this is a 12 volt camera not a 6 volt camera some trail cameras um, are 6 volt but have two 6 volt bays where you can put uh, two sets of 6 volt batteries so you have four batteries in series which cause create 6 volts and they have two bays but this is not that this is a 12 volt camera which means that you must have eight batteries in it for it to work um but as again as in the intro this is one of my preferred designs of camera i like that it doesn't open up the clamshell style where the whole thing opens up like that it's got one latch on the side here you open it up there's your screen you can mount it you can point it i was able to point it exactly where i wanted so i got the the, the good, right picture exactly like i have liked it i like the camo of it it looks it's a good design um you know that's not much else to say about it it seems to be a pretty decent camera at a very decent price so i hope you enjoyed this video if you have please like subscribe and comment when you do subscribe please click the little bell to receive notification for new videos i will throw a link to this product in the description of the video video if you are interested in it so until next time this is the gadget man saying i'll see you later